Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and you know I can't resist these little stick PCs, and I just got in this one from Melee. This is their PC G02 APO, and I picked this up on AliExpress for about 200 bucks, and we're going to be uh, taking a closer look at this stick PC. Uh, like some of the other small form factor computers we've looked at over the last couple of weeks, uh, this one is powered by an Intel Apollo Lake processor, uh, which is supposed to run faster than the Atom processors that these little computers used to have last year. But as we noted in a prior review, you don't always get the best performance out of those chips in these form factors. And we'll see if this one fares any better. Now, before we get into this review, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little computer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This again is powered by an Apollo Lake processor, an N3450, which is a quad core chip, I believe. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, which is good, but like all of these little mini PCs, it only has 32 gigabytes of storage, which makes it uh, almost useless to some degree. I've been really struggling with Windows 10 lately, uh, especially since the creator's update came out because without a lot of storage on the device, updates are really horrible to go through. In fact, this is the second uh, tiny little Apollo Lake machine that I've looked at that literally took an entire day uh, to get all of its updates installed. They would fail, you have to restart them. If it runs out of space, you have to go find external storage to pop into it. Not ideal. And the reason why these manufacturers keep selling these PCs with only 32 gigabytes of storage is that Microsoft gives them a discount on the operating system, which is how they're able to pack Windows on a computer for only $200, but it's not all that usable, unfortunately, uh, with that limited amount of storage. Now, there is a rumor uh, that appeared on Lilliputing the other day. I'll put a link to it down below in the video description uh, that Microsoft is working on a lean version of Windows 10 that will only take up about two gigabytes of storage. So if that happens, uh, these computers might be more useful, but just be prepared. You're going to have a really hard time getting all the updates installed on this thing before you can really use it. It certainly slowed us down quite a bit, and this is now the second time we've had to struggle uh, with updates on one of these little computers. You may also be asking yourself, what are these things for? Because a lot of times you're, again, compromising on a lot of usability uh, to get into a small form factor at a, at a reasonable price like you see with these things. And uh, the reason why I think these are popular and usable is that they're very good in uh, corporate environments, for example, where you need something just you know, basic, enough to kind of get into your thin client, for example. I used to work in an office where we use these little types of computers to log into the server with remote desktop connections, but we still wanted to have uh, the ability to run Word and Office applications locally. Uh, they're very small, they make no noise, there's no moving parts, and they're cheap, and uh, oftentimes that works out really well in certain use cases. So that is why I have such an interest in these things. You can get a lot of value out of them, provided you get them set up properly to begin with. So enough about that. Let's get into the hardware here. Uh, we've got two USB 3.0 ports here. Uh, you also have your power input here, and unfortunately it only takes essentially uh, a tablet charger to power it, which means its chip is not getting uh, the full amount of power it can use, which will impact performance, as you'll see uh, in a few minutes when we get further into things here. So uh, you are going to see, again, a performance level that won't be on par with other computers that take more power running with the same chip. It also limits how much, th how much power you can get out of these USB ports. So if you are plugging in an external hard drive, for example, uh, you might overload it and force it to shut down. And my advice would be uh, to have a powered USB hub handy if you do plan to plug in uh, larger hard drives that need power from the computer itself. That is one limitation with the uh, small amount of electricity that essentially goes into the device here. On the back, you've got a, a gigabit ethernet jack here, which is nice, especially if you are using this on a corporate network, for example. You have a headphone jack here. Uh, this is a Kensington lock because this thing is so tiny, it's so easy to walk off with it. Uh, you can chain it down with one of those Kensington locks and make it a little bit harder to walk away with. It's got a big antenna here because it does have Wi-Fi built in. It supports AC wireless along with the traditional 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Uh, that worked fine for us in earlier testing. Uh, the top and bottom are essentially a big heat sink. 
um, which is why I recommend if you can maybe have the computer sitting on its side or uh, plug directly into the HDMI connector on your display. The HDMI port is right here, of course. Uh, what they do, though, pack in the box is a female-to-female -female connector so you can extend this out in case it's not feasible to uh, plug this into the back of your TV. You can get uh, a cable plugged in and use it uh, like a regular computer might attach to it. But again, I think you want to keep uh, both of these, uh, you know, these heat sinks here kind of open into the air so that they can dissipate the heat as it's going through. We'll talk about the thermals in a few minutes. And on the side here, you've got a micro SD card slot for augmenting that very limited onboard storage. So if you don't want to attach up a big hard drive, uh, you can pop in a card here. I think like 128 gigabyte cards are supported and that'll at least give you a little bit of extra storage to play with. And as you're doing updates, the updates can also use that storage to get uh, things installed for you. So overall, that is the hardware. Not a bad little uh, layout here, very similar to what we've seen before. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So we're going to kick things off with some web browsing. We've got our 1080p 60 frames per second video running here. You can see uh, what that looks like. No drop frames. It's running as expected, which is what we have seen from other Apollo Lake chips here in the past. We also loaded up nasa.gov over Wi-Fi so you can see how fast the website comes up. Uh, not really snappy, but decent enough to get around the web and do your email and everything, I think. So uh, not bad on the web browsing front. I didn't see much faster when I plugged in the Ethernet cable either. So I think what you see there is what you can expect. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test, and there we got a score of 35.83, which is right within the margin of error for what we have seen from other similarly equipped computers. Of note here is that it is significantly faster than the Zotac Pi 225 we looked at about two weeks ago, which was this little credit card size PC uh, running with the dual core version of the chip in this one. Uh, so it does do better than that one did and about the same as another N3450 equipped computer we looked at a few months ago called the Byte 3. Uh, but I think once you start really taxing this thing with other types of activities, you're going to start seeing a performance disparity there. And we also ran Microsoft Word on it to see how it might do in an office environment. It wasn't the fastest thing out there, but on par with uh, what we've experienced with other low-cost, fanless machines in the past. So I think you'll be able to get uh, some work done on it as well. So let's move on to its gaming performance, and we'll start off as we always do with the Java version of Minecraft running with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin. And we're seeing frame rates at 1080p at around uh, 20 frames per second or so. That's a little behind what we would normally expect from a computer powered by one of these chips. Uh, we also ran Half-Life, which is about 12 years old or so, and uh, that one actually ran pretty decently around 26 to 40 frames per second, give or take, depending on what you were doing in the game. Again, that's a little behind what we typically see on this processor. And for the heck of it, we booted up Rocket League, which sometimes actually does run pretty nicely on these Apollo Lake chips with all the settings turned down, of course. Uh, here we did not get such a nice experience, about 8 to 10 frames per second, so I think you're going to be limiting yourself to older games and a lot of retro emulation, probably uh, up to about the Nintendo 64 or so. So again, not a great gaming platform, but uh, that is not what we are expecting with this. On the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 1,296, uh, which is way behind the Azul Byte 3 powered by the same processor. We did see slightly better CPU performance out of the Melee here versus the Byte. Uh, but generally here, as you can see, the graphics performance is uh, much farther behind. I was also surprised to see that the Zotac Pi 225 uh, did better graphically uh, than this one is doing currently here. But uh, again, neither one of these machines are very well suited for gaming. I also put up the Azul Quantum Access, which is a similar uh, stick PC running with the Atom Cherry Trail processor. And you can see there we're getting uh, a score of 1,592. So it does a little bit better graphically uh, than this more recent generation processor does. But again, it's due to the fact there's not enough power going in to really take advantage of what this chip is capable of doing. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the computer does under load over a long period of time. And this is a fanless computer. Many Apollo Lake devices have a fan to cool them off. And we were eager to see how passive cooling here might work because the Zotac, I don't think, did as well. Uh, this one actually passed the test. It got a score of 97.6%. 
uh, which means that it's not likely to throttle itself even under load over a period of time. So that might be uh, good potentially in a home theater environment perhaps or something else where you are stressing the processor a little bit yet still can get something uh, usable out of the computer as a result. So we we're very pleased to see uh, what we got there for uh, that test and you can see the temperatures there as well. So let's move on now to home theater and it does okay but not great depending on what your needs are. Uh, so if your intention is just to play back some 1080p Blu-ray MKV files, for example, uh, that should work fine. We booted up Kodi. We were able to get all the lossless audio formats working. The device also successfully switched into 24p mode for movies that were shot at 24p. It does output at 4K through its HDMI port here on the front. Uh, but it does not support 60 frames per second. That's something the Apollo Lake doesn't support at 4K, but it does do 30p just fine. And since most movies are 24p, you shouldn't have an issue up converting to 4K with this. Things play back smoothly uh, without any drop frames, again, with the lossless audio uh, coming through successfully. However, we did test out its HEVC capabilities, a more compressed video format. Typically, the Apollo Lake processors are able to work with that video format just fine. Uh, here, it did not. So we ran our 140 megabits per second test file, uh, which is 10-bit HEVC 4K, and it was getting a ton of skipped frames. In fact, I've never seen an Apollo Lake device not be able to play back that file successfully. Uh, this one could not. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you are looking at HEVC stuff. And also remember that these Apollo Lake devices don't output HDR either uh, to your television set. And we also booted up Ubuntu Linux on it. This is one of their nightly builds, and it worked just fine. We had audio, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth worked okay along with uh, the video. So I think if you are maybe planning to try to get a little bit more out of its limited storage and put in uh, Linux, for example, you will be able to do that. And it seemed to be working just fine when we did so. So that was good to see. And that is something we've seen on a lot of other Apollo Lake devices as well. So, my final thoughts on this one. Uh, I like the form factor. The performance is better than I expected, but that's not saying much. It's still a little underperforming, uh, given that it's not getting all that much power over that USB cable that powers it. Uh, so it would be nice to see some of these little form factor PCs with the Apollo Lakes have more power running through them. But what's happening here is that uh, Intel stopped making the Atom chips, which were designed for this form factor. And now we're seeing manufacturers trying to work with uh, something that really probably needs active cooling in order to be effective. But it is usable. It's certainly able to deliver a lot of what you can get on a more powerful Apollo Lake device. But again, you will be seeing some performance drop-offs with this one. But if you're looking for something really small that can just kind of fit in the back of your monitor you know, plugged right into the uh, port there. Uh, this will certainly accomplish it. It will be a little faster perhaps than uh, what we saw in prior generations and it does seem to be able to keep itself cool uh, provided you give it a decent amount of airflow and again I do like the fact that you have an ability to uh, lock it down with something to keep it from walking away. So that's going to do it for our Melee PC G02 APO and this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.